Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Culture Hub. My name is Sadia Abdul Awe. In this week's episode, we shall be taking a trip to China. Yes, you heard me right. China. Well, literally, I mean. We shall learn a thing or two about China's culture, traditions such as tea, art, craft, and so much more. So please, do me a favor, don't move a muscle. We shall be right back after this. Welcome back. The National Radio and Television Administration, China, NRTA, led media exchange activities with participants from four countries, namely Nigeria, Jamaica, Nepal, and Georgia, on touring China with short videos. China is the largest of all Asian countries, occupying nearly the entire Eastern Asian landmarks. It covers approximately one fourteenth of the land area of Earth and it's almost as large as the whole of Europe. China is also one of the most populous countries in the world, rivaled only by India, which according to the United Nations estimates surpasses its population in 2023. China is a magical country with special cultures, traditions and ancient civilization. Now, let's talk about China tea. The climate in China is heterogeneous and in different regions, tea growing condition varies. It grows on diverse soil at different altitude in the virgin temperatures. China has tea trees ranging over 20 meters in height and tea bushes. Tea leaves are also distinguished as wild, narrow and small. Each tea types have respective harvest time. Sometimes different teas can be produced from the same plants. White tea of birds in February, red tea of tips in March, green tea of leaves in April. Yet only one type of tea is produced after all distinguished by quality grades, which depends on the period of its harvesting. Green tea undergoes most tender processing, therefore the beverage in its chemical composition comes out to be the closest to the growing tea leaves. Green tea is refreshing, it gives vivacity and strength to the body. That's why I love green tea. There are six types of Chinese tea. The green tea, white tea, yellow tea, red tea, oolong tea and of course the black tea. Now, let's watch the process of making the Chinese tea. Fantastic. I never knew that while taking tea, the three sips is important. Wow. We keep learning every day. Moving on to China fabric. 
China fabric, making clothes was women's work in China. In the early times, the two main fabrics are silk and hemp, supplemented by other fiber, such as rami. Silk has always been interwoven with the nation's history, and the textile that employ the fine material remain sought after in the world. Take a look at how these women make China fabrics with their hands. Amazing. Next on our list is the China dance or Chinese dance. Dance in China is highly varied art form, consisting of many modern and traditional genres. The dance covers a wide range from folk dance to performance in opera and ballet and may be used in public celebrations, rituals and ceremonies. There are 56 officially recognized ethnic groups in China. And each ethnic minority group in China also has its own folk dance. Outside of China, the best known Chinese dance today are the dragon dance and the lion dance. Many of the traditional Chinese dance have a long history. This may be folk dance or dance that were once performed as rituals or as an entertainment spectacle. And some may have been performed in the imperial court. Among the best known of the Chinese traditional dance are the dragon dance and the lion dance. Both dances were known in early dynasties and various forms. A form of the lion dance similar to today's lion dance was described as early as the Tang dynasty. The modern form of the dragon dance, however, may be a more recent development. Take a look at this amazing dances by these beautiful women.
Oh my goodness, I wish I could do all that dance moves, but unfortunately, I can't even dance to save my own life. Moving on to Chinese acts. Chinese acts is a visual act that originated or it's practiced in China. Greater China or by Chinese artists. Acts created by Chinese residing outside of China can also be considered a part of Chinese acts when it's based on or drawn on Chinese culture, heritage, and history. Earlier, Stone Age acts dates back to 10,000 BC, mostly consisting of simple poetry and sculptures. After that period, Chinese acts like Chinese history was typically classified by succession of ruling dynasties of Chinese emperors, most of which lasted several hundred years. Now, let's talk about the Chinese kites. When we talk about the skies above China, we are often referring to topics like pollutions or busy airlines. But beneath the cloud, there is a Chinese art that has gleaded through history. This ancient relic brings back the colors and patterns of the ancient dynasties to the city skies of modern China and the world. It's the famous Chinese kite and its long history of cultural significance begins thousands of years ago. I know you've been wondering what Chinese kite is. Well, the kite is believed to have originated in China since its invention. There have been many adaptations to the kite by various cultures around the world. The kites you probably flew as kids look a bit different from the original Chinese kite, even the kites of modern China. A Chinese kite in ancient times would have used simple materials such as woods and clothes. They were often made to resemble the shapes of birds. Today, elaborate and large in designs can be seen flying above parks in China. They would often resemble real animals and members of the Chinese zodiac. Some kites have LED lights attached to allow for a night flight and fun light show. Now, let's learn how to make the Chinese kites. Due to the limitation of time, my introduction to the kite culture is over. And we're going to together paint our kites and fly them outside. Some kites are the peony. Some, some kites are peony. Other kites are butterflies. You can choose. inspiration from it and make it this way. It has the Caesar, 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 Caesar like tails and a round head. See the head is round. Interesting. I personally love kites. I kind of like the fact that the Chinese kites are bursting with beautiful colors. With that, we've come to the end of this episode. I hope you've enjoyed our program this week. If yes, please give me a thumbs up if you're watching via our social media handles. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already done that. Thank you for watching. See you again, same time, same station. Thank you. Bye.